Alrighty, Professor Bobo here showing off the HOTS caster tool. This is just going to be a brief overview of what the caster tool does and is capable of. Uh, we're going to show a window just looking at some of the different tabs of the caster tool and then I will show examples of uh, what your broadcast winds up looking like. Um, this is the caster tool interface itself built by Philindreth and Crow. Here on the um, main page, just some very sort of basic information. The most important part here uh, is the stats source here in the bottom. Um, the stats source allows us to pull uh, from various databases uh, from whatever set of replay files you can build. Uh, as you can see here, I have uh, Heroes Lounge, uh, the NA Season 1, I have NGS Season 5, as well as HGC Phase 2. And then we can use that to pull specific stats, which we can show you guys later. Uh, but within the tool, um, again, what we found throughout the course of NGS was that we were struggling to display um, as a lot of critical information there on the screen that our viewers were looking for. Um, and it also became more and more complex as casters were actually competing with each other to show more things on screen. So the tool itself uh, provides easy setup um, and just a, a high degree um, of complexity built into a very simple tool that takes a very short amount of time uh, to set up. Uh, here in the general data, uh, you can see that we um, just have some very simple information and this will translate over into OBS and we'll show you guys what's going on with that. Um, you know, just some very simple things. You've got our caster uh, as well as our, uh, our Twitter address here and just a little bit more, you know, sort of simple information. We have a lot of uh, match data this here in the match setup uh, gets into the map selection screen, which we will show off. This is, um, in my opinion, the crown jewel of what the tool is capable of doing. Um, again, throughout NGS season number five, we were finding that people just didn't know what maps were banned, what maps were played, and how the set was moving. Um, so this uh, was created just to sort of mimic what HGC does, you know, with their map selection uh, screen. Here in the team setup, uh, you've got everything laid out for you with blue team and red team. Here in the team logos, we have uh, files that we can go ahead and pull logos from anywhere from. And then uh, down on the bottom here, you see uh, we've got players uh, attached to uh, hero selections, which we'll show off with the uh, display pop-ups here when we get to it. Uh, and then the last tab here is for stats. And we will show off the lower third. Uh, the lower third is... Um, just a way to relay information from stats of the storm onto the screen to provide a more interactive and, and quite frankly, more interesting um, display, particularly in the draft setup. And uh, here we can pull a, a variety of different information. Uh, it can be based around the hero, the team, or individual players as well. And we'll certainly go ahead and we'll show that off. But um, just to relay where all this is coming from here, um, in the caster overlay tool, again, we have our different data sets. And then, you know, within uh, the folder, we've got all the different pieces that go into this. And if we dig a little bit deeper here in the OBS source, uh, yes, I am a dirty Chrome user. All of these browser sources correlate uh, into OBS's browser sources, which will show off the themes. And uh, the themes are variable. You can have uh, your graphic designer build you themes that are specific for a league, a single event. I mean, they can be um, mixed and matched as they see fit. And also within here, um, within all these other folders are all the little individual pieces that go into the caster tool and onto the display. So it's important to note that um, what you're seeing on screen, again, is highly variable. You can take pieces and move them around and, and use them different ways. Um, and we've only really begun to experiment with that um, in a limited sense. So um, kicking it back over, uh, let's show what this does here in OBS. So uh, I have my intro screen here just for a very simple Heroes Lounge cast. Um, but moving on, well, we can slide into the caster box here. Um, and again, very simple information. Uh, here on the bottom where you see the Heroes Lounge logo, that's loaded in. Uh, that isn't something that I had to uh, preload in. We can just wind up selecting that. Um, you know, we got some other information there. Everywhere that you see team logos, it's pulling from the folder um, where we have sort of red team and blue team logo. Um, let's see, the only other, oh, I want to show off oh, here, if I may. You can change things on the fly with the caster tool um, instantly. Um, I know this is going to bounce around a little bit, but we have the ability to quickly shift into a duo caster setup here. 
And then we also on the bottom of the screen have these little frame variants which can be updated to change the size on the bottom of the screen, um, depending on how much information you want to put down there. Um, so personally, again, I like going with just one caster and then frame variant three, which is a little bit bigger. Um, it does, you know, make things a lot easier. And again, this is all being done on the fly. You can do this um, in between matches, uh, in between sets. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can play with that. Uh, here we have uh, what's kind of called the, the keys slide. There on the right side of the uh, screen, you can see we have little bullet point information uh, that we can um, set up there in the general data tab of the tool, um, just to throw a couple of different things out there. Um, and again, we can do this on the fly. So, um, so if we were to go ahead and change something in there, um, we can do a couple different things. So if I just go ahead and update it here with a couple clicks of the keys, you can see it changes right there on the screen. I can add to, you know, anything that I want to add in for the keys. Um, but also, um, just to highlight a little bit of the variability here, uh, we'll get into the map selection screen eventually, but we can show off what is going to turn into um, the map selection screen. We've got uh, our different map tiles up here. Um, and that will bleed into this screen, which is the map selection. So uh, once again, what we found um, throughout NGS is that we were really unable to communicate what was going on with the bands and the picks uh, throughout the course of a set. Um, so here, and I'm doing this again on the fly, we can go ahead and we can start um, to populate this screen with bands. As you can see, Cursed Hollow and Braxis uh, have been banned out by the blue and the red teams. And this is a best of three. So let's just say we're getting a little bit deeper into the set. Um, maybe we've already played a couple of games. Let's go ahead. We'll get two on the board. And with just an update, you can see how everything here winds up populating on the fly. There on, uh, on the right side, um, you've got who's won and lost these individual maps. And then say we were in between match number two and match number three, we can also just add match number three. Uh, before it's being played, and maybe Red Team has chosen to take us to Sky Temple with uh, the last map. And we could also update the score to reflect what's going on there. You can see the score changing in there. Um, another critical piece of information here is if you're familiar with OBS and tinkering with images and sizes, uh, the Caster Overlay tool takes care of that on this screen. I do not have to change the image size for any of the team logos that are up on the board. It's um, just set. Everything fits very nicely. And the same thing, uh, you know, works for the text that you see on the screen as well. So again, that is the map selection screen, which again, we can just change on the fly and do a whole bunch of cool things with. Um, I don't have hots open right now, but we can show the draft screen. And um, what's amazing about this here is the lower third. And uh, we talked a little bit about stats and um, what you can wind up showing. So if I wanted to pick up stats on a specific uh, popular hero, um, we can go ahead and we can throw Blaze's stats. And this is pulling directly from Stats of the Storm. This is the Heroes Lounge uh, database for season number one in the games and the replays that we have collected thus far. And you can see pick rate, win rate, and ban rate are included there. You can also um, change those three stats uh, of stats that are there. So we've changed the pick. You know, we, we can move things uh, around a little bit. We can change um, what we're showing up on the screen. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to communicate this information. We can do this with individual teams as well as individual players. So you may want to know, um, for instance, if you're an HCC fan, um, you know, what are Snitch's stats on Mediv? How does Reset do on Hanzo? You know, what, what is Mac doing on Thrall? This can all be queued up on the fly and, uh, and then hidden and just be reset as you move through the match. Here on the in-game screen, just to show really quickly, we've got best of three. We have all of our maps here up in the top. We have our uh, org logo in the bottom left. And then everything, again, fitting on the overlays up in the top. Uh, once again, everything fits perfectly. It does not have to be tinkered with. It is already set up for the caster to uh, just go. On our poach match screen, we included the uh, draft bar in the bottom to try to show the score. Uh, but the uh, postgame stat box will fit perfectly there. Um, within the overlay tool. Um, 
So once again, just showing off a lot of what the caster overlay tool can do. And it's important to know that, um, again, the theme that you're looking at is not the only theme that the caster overlay tool can accommodate. Uh, currently, we're actually working on using the caster overlay tool for different games, which require different overlays. But also, once again, if you have an overlay package for a specific event, for a specific tournament, uh, maybe you just want to start to swap out fonts, colors, the position of things. Um, you can work with your graphic designer. Uh, I know a pretty good one in Crow, and uh, you can make your uh, you know broadcast experience look like whatever you want. I mean, again, there is nothing out there like this caster overlay tool. There are snippets of it out there. There are scoreboard tools. Um, there are little bits and pieces, but you know what we found over time was that they really only um, help you with things like the team name and the team score. Nothing really gets as in depth as the caster overlay tool uh, can do. Uh, so cheers and thanks.